Gary Goggin is the editor of Silver Stock Analyst, and he says once this election is behind us, we could possibly see silver prices reach those triple digits. So how? He joins me today. Garrett, uh, nice to see you. Welcome to the show. Hey, Daniela. Nice to see you again. Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah, well, thank you for, for accepting the invitation. Happy to talk silver with you today. I read with great interest your latest uh, installment uh, of your newsletter, where you say there's one candidate for silver. One Let's candidate. talk about your, your thoughts here. Yep. Um, you know, I'm not necessarily political. Uh, you know, um, I'm referring to, you know, being a silver investor, what's best for silver, not necessarily our economy. Um, and that one candidate, um, you know, is a Democrat and it's Joe Biden, because, you know, if you look at his policies with that uh, new green deal or that Joe Biden's new green deal, they want to spend a hundred trillion dollars or, you know, Joe Biden wants to spend two trillion dollars. Um, you know, that's a tremendous amount of money uh, redoing our energy infrastructure. Um, and a lot of the energy infrastructure, they want to move it towards solar. Solar is only uh, about 10% of our nation's power right now. They want to move it to 50% over the next three years if, if Biden wins. Um, and in each solar panel, there are, you know, 1.5 meters, the big ones you see, there's 20 grams of silver in each one. Now, 20 grams of silver is uh, six tenths of an ounce, ounce of silver. And, you know, if they do that, you know, it's going to be, they want to add 500 um, million additional panels. That's, you know, 300 million ounces. And mm. then you have China on top of that. China wants to move towards solar also. They have 639 million solar panels um, as an installed base in China. They want to grow that 10x over the next few years. So yes, Biden's going to be good. But this whole push towards green energy, it's great for the solar industry and it's great for silver. Okay, so I guess two points there. Well, what happens if the Republicans, um, you know, keep control of the Senate then? Because mm -hmm. how would the Democrats push this through Congress? Yeah, um, you know, either party, uh, they're still going to be spending tremendous amounts of money, you know, depend, uh, irregardless of who's in power. That next stimulus bill, the $2 trillion one that's kind of on hold right now, that's going to be coming through, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. And you can expect two more stimulus deals over the next upcoming year. And, you know, that's the thing that uh, really powers silver. You know, the, the extra demand is nice. The solar demand is going to continue. And then also uh, with the demand, uh, silver is used to make all the electronics that we use, you know, mm -hmm. all your cell phones, all your automobiles, all your flat screens, um, you know, it's all uses silver and that's not going to slow down anytime soon. So, you know, the, the trend towards, you know, increase of uh, uh, increase of usage of silver is going to continue. Um, but, you know, either party is going to spend a tremendous amount of money. Um, and, you know, we're not necessarily so, concerned about so that. So, Garrett, yes. So, Joe Biden has gone on the record saying he's committed up until 2050 to invest in, in, in solar energy, mm -hmm. you know, with the Green New Deal or whatnot. Um, but the question is, could there not be a substitute um, for silver? Because, you know, I don't know if you crunch numbers, but how much would it cost per solar, solar panel to, to use silver? You said how, how much silver in each? Uh, six tenths of an ounce. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's what happens. It's called thrifting within the industry. As the price of silver goes up, you start finding substitutes. You can use copper, um, you can use other uh, base metals, but they don't have the conductivity that silver does. Silver has, you know, the best conductivity out of any single matter, uh, metal. And that's why it's used in the electronics industry. And when I say used in the electronics industry, it's all for those, it's a lot of it's silver sol solder. Uh, that are could create the connections between the wires and all the uh, the the panels and um, you know computers and cell phones and automobiles. So Garrett, that said, you know I, I get it. You you love silver. Uh, you've been a big advocate of silver. So mm -hmm. do we look? Uh, do you like physical holding physical? I know you like the mining stocks. Do you like a mix of both? How do you mm -hmm. invest in silver? Well, I am the editor of Silver Stock Analyst, right? So you know I'm pretty focused on the um, the silver miners, the equities, and you know. I know silver uh, stock analysts is different from all the other publications because, you know, the gold industry is relatively easy. You produce gold, you sell gold. Whereas the silver industry, uh, when you produce silver, there's a lot of, you're producing a lot of other base metals. Silver comes as a byproduct to, uh, um, along with lead and zinc and gold and all silver miners, the report their cash costs and all the sustaining costs differently. And you look at some miners and it appears as if, you know, they're, you know, strongly profitable reporting low cost, 
But if you actually do that on an apples to apples basis, convert everything to a silver equivalent and convert their costs into a silver equivalent, you can see that a lot of the silver miners are unprofitable at lower silver prices. So, you know, I convert everything into an AG equivalent and then I compare everything. I try to get as much free cash as I can or NAV uh, versus for uh, enterprise value, which is, you know, the stock price uh, plus debt. So you try to get as much free cash as possible for the littlest amount uh, to pay that you want. Okay, so Garrett, when you're you know choosing amongst all the silver miners, what what do you look for? You know, there there's three particular things that we look for. Number one is management, um, people, the people running the project. Uh, in the industry, you know that we've been following for a long time. We see that it falls into two classes: you get value creators and value destroyers. One of the largest uh, capitalized silver companies that's very well known, its share price was three hundred dollars a share uh, in the late '90s. Now it's three dollars a share. It's down 97% over the past 20 years. That is a value destroyer. We see it over and over again. They sell shares, they dilute the shareholders and the share price goes down. You need to find miners and executives that know that are invested in the company along with you, that equity shareholders that know how to build value. You know, uh, Keith Newmeyer for Majestic does a great job. Uh, Eric Fear, you know, with Silvercrest, Silvercrest Metals has done an amazing job. And, you know, an interesting story regarding this is, um, you know, Silvercrest Mining, Eric Fear's previous uh, reincarnation, um, you know, that got taken over by First Majestic, released a stock stub. And, you know, First uh, Silvercrest Mining was one of the silver stock analyst uh, picks at that time. So all of our shareholders, all of our uh, subscribers were shareholders. They got a share dividend and that became Silvercrest Metals. And Silvercrest Metals went from 10 cents to 10 bucks. That's a hundred X return. That's 10,000% over the past few years. So all the silver stock analyst subscribers, you know, uh, were along for the ride and, you know, they enjoyed it. It's one of the greatest returns we've had. Well, that, that's the battle is finding the stock that can give you that kind of return, but it's mm -hmm. one in how many, Garrett? Uh, it, it's like picking which tree's going to get hit by lightning. Yeah. And you have some good picks uh, in, in your newsletter, Garrett. Last thought, you talked triple digit silver what's really the possibility of that? I mean, look at us struggling here. We're still mm -hmm. halfway away from silver's original all-time high of $50. So, you know, what, how do you see us getting from this price, price point as we're speaking right now, we're still sitting around $23 an ounce to mm -hmm. over $100 an ounce? You know, a lot of guys, you know, like Keith, right? Uh, Newmeyer, the CEO of First Majestic is right. between $100 silver. And, you know, people have mocked him, but, you know, I, I appreciate him standing up for the silver industry and it's going to happen. In 2008, we had the crash, right? Um, they put, the Fed put in, uh, the Fed's balance sheets grew by a trillion dollars. It went from one trill to two trill. Now, this recent crisis, our, uh, the Fed's balance sheets have gone from four trill to seven trill. That's three times the stimulus. And back in um, you know, 2008 through 2011, silver went from about 10 bucks to 50 bucks. So now we have three times the stimulus, three times the stimulus, it's gonna get larger. And also, um, you know, in order to keep the rates low, you know, the Fed's gonna be buying all the debt. Their balance sheet is gonna go through the roof over the next few years. And that's what we see silver really tied to. And, um, you know, $100 silver is, it's just a matter of time. It's a matter of um, when, not if. All right. Gary Goggin of the a Silver Stock Analyst. Thank you so much uh, for joining us here on Stansberry Research. Thank you, Danielle. Thanks for having me. Nice to yeah. see you. Thank you. Nice to see you as well. And thank you for watching. We will have much more for you. In the meantime, uh, please do follow us on all our social media channels. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm Daniela Camboni.